Hey guys, this is Post Production Pi with SRLounge.com, and welcome to episode two of our weekly Lightroom edit. In this tutorial, I'm going to do a black and white edit for you guys using this image that you see here. This was shot actually at the exact same time as uh, the episode one image, and let me go over just how it was shot. So I'm going to pull up my information by hitting I one more time, just so we can uh, see the camera information. It was shot on a Canon 5D Mark II. Uh, this was at 3 20th uh, second of a shutter and an f7.1 and the reason for that is basically because the 16 to 35 L is a great lens but it's very very soft on the edges in fact if you're shooting at 2.8 it's almost unusably soft at the edges and you can check this out by just looking over on this left side you can see how soft it gets just even compared to something that's like uh, you know just a little bit further into the image so at 2.8 it's even worse and I wanted to make sure that this image was basically tack sharp or as sharp as it could be from the center all the way to the edges so I could have ran it up a little bit higher, ran up the ice a little bit higher, but I was going to be sacrificing basically image detail and dynamic range for sharpness, and so I thought 7.1 was a good kind of balance. All right, so this was also taken in Laguna Beach. I have this couple, uh, my subject, they're sitting on a rock, which really isn't that high. It's probably only about six feet off the ground, but because of my camera angle and all the foreground elements that we're using, it looks like they're literally at the top of the mountain, but they're really not. All right, so let's get to post-producing this. I'm going to hit I again to remove my information. Now, there's a lot of things that we can do with this image, but what I think I want to do with this image is do a black and white. Although there's not really any right way, there's probably 10 different correct ways of creating a cool image from this uh, photograph. But let's do a black and white in this week's tutorial. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit V to black and white our image. And then let's start, as we normally do, with our largest adjustments first. So we're going to go over to the brightness. Uh, I'm going to tack up the brightness a little bit. We're going to go up to, like, say, 80 is about right. Let's zoom in just to see how bright they are. I want to make sure that they're about right. And then what we're going to do here is just kind of play around with the contrast um, till we get a nice level. And I kind of want this image just to really pop, to have a really strong level of detail and everything. So let's bump our contrast up. Let's take it up to about 60. There, our subjects are so small in this image that I'm not worried about you know, lighting on their faces and making sure it's perfectly smooth and stuff. Uh, what I'm really worried about is just post-producing this so it's a cool landscape photo because that's primarily what it is. So let's take up the blacks a little bit. Again, I want it to be really dramatic. I'm going to pull up the blacks up here. There's literally very little detail in them that we need to worry about. Um, if her hair is crushed black, you're not going to really notice it anyway. So. Let's put it up to about there, and then I think that's great. Um, on this image, I'm probably not going to use any fill light because you notice if we take it up to 20, it, it kind of kills that drama in the image. I want the blacks to be really black. I want those shadows just to completely be clipped, basically, in those, in those really dark areas. So I'm going to leave that out. What I am going to do is let's first of all actually clean up some of the dust on my sensor. So let's zoom in up here. We're going to click, uh, just hit our... Uh, spot removal tool and then we're going to have it on the heel setting. I'm just going to go and quickly remove these items and what we want to do is just make sure that you're, I'm just mousing up and mousing down to adjust the uh, spot healing tool just to be approximately the size of whatever I'm healing out. I want it to be just a little bit larger and uh, you guys don't have to get this so it's perfect but I want to get at least the super noticeable uh, dust flex out by the way, when you are running up your aperture, even if you think your lens and your sensor is clean, it is probably going to pick up something. So just a note, if you're going up, uh, if you're stopping down the apertures to like 7.1, 9, 11, most likely unless you clean and perfect your glass at every single shoot, you're going to have something on the lens. So just to be aware to look for it. I think that's about good. Let's zoom out and make sure that we can't see anything else. Yeah, that looks fine. Okay, now what I want to do is I want to really kind of pull down the sky as well as lead the eye right into the center of the photo and along this kind of line that we have here. So let's do one thing first. Let's set a crop and uh, let's make this, I think it'd be really cool as a two to one crop, just like a super wide image. So let's go to enter custom. We're just going to go two to one and let's see if we can kind of play around with our composition just a little bit. So I want to drag this in just so basically I have them on the on that third line so they're basically we're two-thirds up in the frame one-third over on this side so we're just kind of balancing out the image 
if we don't like it, you guys can leave it as the, the wide one, it's fine. But they're not quite centered in that image and they're not quite on the one-third line, so I think compositionally this is a little bit stronger. All right, now what we're going to do from here is we're going to get our uh, gradient filter or graduated filter and then we're going to set it to an exposure brush and what I'm going to do is drop it down to about negative one. We can always adjust this, but what we're going to do is pull it up from the bottom. And what I want this exposure brush to do, I'm going to hold shift so it constrains the uh, direction of it so it's completely, perfectly horizontal. What we want to do here is I want to pull it down so it's basically like, I want the bottom of the image just to fall to a complete black. So it has a really kind of dramatic look. Kind of looks like they're on Mars or something. All right, that one's fine. We're going to grab the top of it. We're going to do the same thing with the top. I'm going to pull down the sky though on this one and we're going to have a diagonal a little bit. And then we're going to tweak it. Again, we don't want these things to be too strong because they will be noticeable if they're too strong. So about one stop there and let's actually redo this one. I'm going to pull it up again from the bottom and we're going to make this one diagonal as well. I think it looks a little more natural if it's also diagonal. And let's pull it down. I don't want to kill this uh, kind of mid-level detail too much right here on this line. So what I'm going to do to get the bottom to drop out completely to black is I'm just going to add another one. So let's add another one and let's pull this one down like to negative three. And then we'll grab this and drag it up from the bottom just to kind of clip out that, uh, that detail on the very bottom of the image. Okay. And that looks great. Let's, uh, let's check out our uh, detail and stuff like that. That looks great. Let's check out the detail. So I'm going to go down my detail panel. Let's zoom in to 100%. Because I did do a lot of cropping, I do want to do a little bit of sharpening and enhancement on this. Uh, let's start with our standard. It's going to be 70, 1.5, and 30. And let's see how we're doing there. That actually looks really good at that level of detail, or that level of sharpening. So let's keep it there. One thing I do want to do is I'm going to add a little bit of noise reduction just to smooth out the sky a tiny bit. Let's take it up to about 40 make sure we don't have any strange artifacting anywhere. Alright guys, that looks great. The last thing I'm going to do is just check my lens corrections. I'm going to just check the vignette. Um, what I want to do is make sure that the tones across the center are kind of even from edge to edge. So we're going to just play with the vignette a little bit. Uh, make sure that it, it looks right. I think about where it was shot actually looks okay. What we can do is just add a little bit of a reverse vignette so it's going up to plus 10 pull the midpoint in a tiny bit and that looks great right there. I think everything else is great guys. Let's uh, let's check out the before and after. So I'm going to hit backslash. Here's our before. Here's our after. Uh, we can look at the original crop as well. So you can see we've cropped in. I feel like it's a, a nice strong composition. If we were out here, uh, it looks cool still but there's not really any compositional rules that this image is following. So that crop helps. Again, you're better off just uh, making sure you kind of nail it right on the mark when you shoot it so it's compositionally correct when it comes out of the camera. But for this scene, I was down against the ground and it was really difficult to get things lined up actually. So anyway guys, that looks great. Great job and we'll talk to you guys next week. Enjoy.